Is that okay, everyone? <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Excellent. So now let's look at a word problem. I, um, I, okay, the wind speed of a tornado. That's interesting. So under certain conditions, the wind speed S in miles per hour of a tornado as the distance d feet from its center can be approximated by the function. Very interesting. So that's 22. And that's s of a, d, and v, which clearly means that a, d, and v are independent variables. And the formula is a, v over 0.51 d squared. Excellent. Where a is a constant. Okay, so now they changed it and they said, okay, it's a constant. Fine. No, that's okay. That depends on certain atmospheric... Con oh, yeah, but it's a constant, but it depends on it. Okay. And v is the approximate uh, volume of the tornado in cu cubic feet. Approximate the wind speed 100 feet from the center. That's the d. So d equals 100 feet. Uh, the volume, v is 1,600,000 cubic feet. And A, which is the constant that depends on the certain atmospheric conditions, is 0.78. Good. I got that down. So, oh, I, I really don't want to do that. But I, I just want to show you first how to plug it in. So all I have to do is just plug in those numbers. So A, 0.78. This is one million six hundred thousand point five one and d is a hundred squared what I would like to do is a hundred squared is four zeros so I will simply cut off four zeros from the top and from ze four zeros from the denominator you don't have to do that you can plug them all in so now I'll share and show you how I would enter it so I have 0.7. Don't forget parentheses. Parentheses for the top, parentheses for the denominator, please. So I cut off four zeros, so 160 times divided by, in parentheses, 0.51. So I got 244.71. And that was... Okay, in miles per hour. Okay, that's all. That's all in this section. Finding domain of, of functions of serial variables, looking at some graphs of how they show, how they look like, and finding, evaluating it. Now, in section 6.2, we're going to find derivatives. of functions of several variables. Okay. Well, I'm going to start with an example. Let's say f of x comma y, two variables, two independent variables, is 2x cubed y plus 4x squared minus 3xy to the fourth. I just made it up. We'll choose examples in a minute. So we cannot differentiate this function based on both variables at the same time. There is no such thing. So what we can do is differentiate, differentiate with respect to x keeping y fixed or vice versa. I'm talking about the first derivative. I'll show you the, the higher order derivatives in a minute. But so if I differentiate with respect to x, it means that x is the variable and y is fixed, like it's a number. You treat it as if it's a number. Okay? Now, when I differentiate with respect to y, it means that x is kept as a number, kept fixed. 
and y is the variable. What is the notation and how is the notation notation look like? Not exactly the one that we used before. We used f prime, we used df over dx, we used dy over dx. No. This regular d doesn't work here. A regular d specifies that this function is a function of one variable and one variable only. Same thing here. This function is a function of one variable. This function is a function of one variable, whatever that is, let's say x. When we differentiate a function of several variables, we have to use this notation, not a regular d. This is called a partial derivative. Yes, of course, the f over dy will be the derivative of f with respect to y, the derivative of f with respect to x when y is fixed. Derivative of y, uh, uh, f with respect to y when x is fixed. Okay, so coming back to my example, df over dx. y is kept fixed, so I'm differentiating this bringing down 2, so this is 6x squared y. I differentiate this with respect to x, no problem, this is 8x. I differentiate this with respect to y, this is constant. When I differentiate with respect to x, with respect to x, of course, y is fixed, this is negative 3, y to the fourth, of course. Now, the f with respect to dy, now, x is fixed. When I differentiate a number times y, I get just a number. Here, when I differentiate with respect to y, it's a constant. When it comes to, when it comes to y, it, does not have any, it has no y, so this is 0. When I differentiate this piece with respect to y, I bring 4 in front. I have negative 12x and subtract 1 from the power. So this is the partial derivative of the function that I just invented with respect to x, and this is the partial derivative of the function that we just saw with respect to y. Now, can I differentiate again? Yes. I can find the second derivative of this, d2f over dx2. This is the second partial derivative with respect to x. Can I differentiate second with respect to y? Yes, we'll do that. Can I differentiate x and then y? Yes. Can I differentiate y and then x? Yes. Now all these have also a shortcut name. So this one is called fx. This one is called fy. This one is called fxx. This one is called, of course, fyy. This one is called fxy. And this one is called fyx, for short. So now when I see this, I know that this function was differentiated with respect to x twice. The function was differentiated with respect to y twice. The function was first differentiated with respect to x and then with respect to y. First with respect to y, and then with respect to x. And you will see what happens here. They will be equal. OK, now, so with this function, let me illustrate fxx, fyy, and fxy. So we determine fx and fy. The first partial derivative of this function with respect to x, the first partial derivative, the second partial derivative, second partial derivative, second partial, second order, second order, second order, second order, second order. Okay, so now let's find fxx. Why we like this notation? Because this is more work to write, right? So we prefer this, but you know what they mean now. Okay, so fxx for this function, I'm differentiating with respect to x again. So 12xy <clears throat> plus, with respect to x, plus 8. 
with respect to x. There is no x. Gone. Now, f, x, y. I want this differentiated with respect to y now. Okay. When I differentiate this with respect to y, I get 6x squared. When I differentiate this with respect to y, nothing. When I differentiate this with respect to y, I get negative 12y to the third. Any questions? Okay, so now I want to find f, y, y. Okay, here it is. This is f, y. I want to differentiate with respect to y. There is no y here. Goodbye. I want to differentiate this with respect to y. Negative 36 x, y squared. So I'm differentiating this with respect to y again. There's no y here, so that's gone. I differentiate y, and I get 3, 36, negative 36, x, y squared. Finally, I want to differentiate f, y again, second time, but with respect to x. Okay, so here it is. I have 6, x squared, and here I have minus 12, y cubed. So in this second section, that's all we are dealing with. And in the last section of the course, we're going to find max min, relative max, relative min for functions of several variables. And that will be the end of the course. There is no more new material. So now let's, um, let's go to 6.2 and see where is it. Where is my, here it is, partial derivatives. Any questions so far till my computer cooperates? Anyone, any questions? Oh, yes. Yes, I want to do this. I will show you one second. What does this mean, this partial derivative? What does it say? And this is a perfect picture. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't show it better or nicer. An uh, explanation of what these partial derivatives mean. So see, when we keep one of the two variables constant, we are looking at the plane. Okay, so this is the plane when x is a constant. So then, go away. Go away. So when we keep this constant, we obtain this curve, c1. Right? It's like it cuts the surface. This is the surface. And it cuts the, the plane cuts the surface and creates this line. It's a, not a line, it's a curve. And the partial derivative, when x is fixed, really gives us the rate of change on this curve. And eventually will give us the max and the min of these surfaces. So this is another situation in which y is kept fixed. y is a constant. So y is just a plane. It does not move. Y does not move. It's just fixed. Let's say at 5. So right here. This is the Y axis. Y is 5. So this is the plane that cuts the surface this way. So when it cuts the surface, then the partial derivative will give us the rate of change of the surface on this curve. How fast is it changing on this curve? in this direction. Okay. Okay. So here we're asked to find dz over dx. So you see uh, the notation is different. 
which indicates that the function is not a function of one variable, but multi or several variables. So we are given, uh, so we are asked to find fx, fy, fx evaluated at the point, and then find fx, fy. Let's see what else is here. The, um, the uh, second order partial derivatives are basically presented in the next section when we determine the max min for these functions. But I want you to see them and know what to, what to expect. So here we're only asked to find the first partial derivative, the first order. Oh, oh no, they're also asking us here, <clears throat> the second order partial derivatives. I just, I always do them together. I don't care where they they present them in one section or separate them in two sections. I have to present them together. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start with any example. Find the four second order partial derivatives means fxx, fxy, fyx, and fyy. Any preference? So here they're showing us to find, they're asking us to find those four. I'd like to choose another example. Does not uh, look at just my the function that I just invented. Let's look at another. Anyone would like to pick or I will? Okay, let's see what Nick says. 31. Excellent. 31. Good. So in 31, uh, we have f of xy equals x to the fifth, y to the fourth, plus x to the third, y squared. Good. So we are going to determine all of them, no matter what they ask. So we're going to find fx, fy, fxx, fyy, fxy, and fyx. And let me start a new video.